Hello friends, it's another beautiful day in the Lord. Thank God we have the Lord Yeshua whom we can hold on to amidst all the unrest in the world. Rosh Hashanah is ending and we are standing amidst the high holy days, the 10 days of all. And now Hurricane Ian is upon us affecting those in Florida and northwards. It just seems to me like everything is coming all at once and if you're noticing, there's an avalanche of signs taking place. So much so that I can only catch a fraction of them because there's just so much activity right now. And you also have to consider that the Shemitah year just ended when Rosh Hashanah began. If you look in the past, the end of the Shemitah year has always been very climactic. I'll give you an example. In 2008, when the stock market came crashing down, it crashed hard on the very last day of the Shemitah. We also have cases where, for example, like 2001, when the stock market was also free falling for six months during the Shemitah year and it hit rock bo bottom one month after the end of the Shemitah year. So here we are, the Shemitah year has just ended and lo and behold, Hurricane Ian is coming forth towards Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and it's been gaining strength over the past few days. Right now, it is a category three storm, it's but gaining strength so much so that it's expected to be a category four storm. And the Lord keeps bringing my attention to the name Ian. What does the name Ian mean? I looked it up. It's of Scottish origin. It's a Scottish name for John and it comes from the Hebrew name Yohanan, which means God is gracious or the Lord is gracious. So I began contemplating how can a hurricane possibly speak of God's grace? Well, what's interesting to me is that it's arriving during the high holy days. It's now a time to reflect and introspect, confess our sins, a time to exhibit a fear of God, turn away from wicked ways. And often a state of emergency will compel people to do this very thing because it strikes fear. It convicts hearts and causes people to turn to God. We also have Yom Kippur that's just around the corner, said to be the holiest day of the year. And that's when we're gonna feel the effects of Hurricane Ian. God's grace can sometimes be terrifying because it arrives at times very dramatically and it shakes things up. And we have to step back and look at the bigger picture at the, at the greater good of what's coming forth from all of this. Like I said, it causes people to turn to the Lord and there's actually much more to look at. I happened to see, my husband was telling me about this, a channel on Telegram that mentioned that there are a lot of deep state globalists who live in Tampa where the hurricane is heading. And usually it's very rare for a hurricane to hit this area. But this man with this Telegram channel, he was alluding that weather manipulation was being used to cause it to move in this direction, to destroy evidence. Whenever the enemy scrambles to hide its secrets, especially in such a vast and wicked way, then the Lord will take it upon himself to go forth and expose these strategies. I can't delve into this on this channel lest I get another strike from YouTube, <laughs> but suffice it to say something very significant is occurring and there's more around this hurricane than meets the eye. Currently, there's a mandatory evacuation in Tampa. My husband and I live in Florida. We're in the Stewart region. Ron DeSantis has declared a state of emergency, urging the public to brace ourselves for the impact. So we have been praying and we will continue to pray for the mercy of God, for lives to be protected. I pray for his protection over the innocent, over his children. I pray that 
minimal damage occurs and this hurricane is deflected. But above all, I pray for the Lord's will and purposes to be accomplished because there may be some inevitable destruction. Did you know that another name for Yom Kippur is the Great Trump? Yes, trumpets in the Bible. The trump in the Bible is the sounding of the alarm. It also comes when there's a need to deal with evil, to expose evil as well. So there's no accident that President Trump was given the name Trump. And Trump also happens to be the son of a Scottish woman. I'm just observing the parallels and the signs. There's so many people who mistake this for exalting Trump. That's not what this is about. We are looking at the Lord's plans and God is using many amazing people around the world to expose evil and corruption. He's using Governor Ron DeSantis. He's using President Trump. He's using Candace Owens. He's using Project Veritas. There's such a very long list of people who are rising to the occasion at this time. Back to the trumpets, the blowing of the shofar began at Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, the wake-up call for change and the return to holiness. And as I've mentioned with the Shemitah, the tail end is doing its final rounds, exposing darkness, exacting justice. You're going to see so much more coming forth. Imagine a massive creature swinging its heavy tail and the tail sweeps past. And one would imagine the worst is over but when it's least expected, the tail reverses back one last time. That's how I picture the end of the Shemitah. There are repercussions, heavy repercussions left in its wake. And I believe that the next few months ending the year require us, especially believers in Christ, to be on high alert. I believe turbulent times are ahead but we have to keep our eyes on the Lord through these crashing waves in a time of a storm and remember his word. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God whom I trust. We have him to stand on. Just be ready. We have some interesting days ahead. I pray that the Lord guards you fiercely at this time. You, your loved ones, your family, your property, that they remain untouched and sanctified. I pray that each one of us is drawn closer to the Lord. Have a blessed 10 days of all. Shalom.